Hello, my name is Veer Animus of VA Games. Welcome to the penultimate chapter of my Let's Play Mega Man X video series. This time we'll be cleaning up the last five Maverick rematches in Sigma's Fortress 3, which is really just this game's version of a classic boss rush. We're up against five Mavericks and this stage is Mechanoloid, but this video is still less than six minutes long. I believe that such brevity stands as a testament to how much X has grown since the outset of this adventure, and such growth is inherently what this game is all about after all. Remember that it was not so long ago that these Mavericks were daunting masters of their respective domains. Each stood as the physical manifestation of challenge for their realm. Now these Mavericks stand before you, one after the other, almost in place of common enemies, mini-bosses, and platforming challenges. They have been reduced in status from threatening masters to be taken seriously to mere henchmen status by virtue of growing stronger. Both by collecting upgrades and empirical knowledge of the game, X is exponentially more powerful at this point than he was at the start of his journey, and such progress is explicitly shown by the juxtaposition of how the game portrays challenges then and now. I suppose this stage is intended to give players a chance to exercise all of the skills that they should have acquired along the way. Sigma's Fortress 3 seems to take a little bit of the best from some of the previous stages to give players one last opportunity to learn and experience their full potential before the final test begins. I believe that, although short, this stage is well designed for that reason. Every experience from the first three fortress areas is meant to bestow and temper the skills required to defeat Sigma at its heart. It was until I realized this that I believed such battles were little more than pageantry. On the surface, it felt like a chore to churn through all the eight boss battles again, and for a time, I might have called it lazy design to artificially inflate the game by forcing you to repeat its fights. Now I realize the genius of its subtlety. Capcom implemented the efficiency of recycled boss data in a narrative mechanic that not only tests the skills of the player, but also subconsciously empowers the player. It is a truly great feeling to manhandle a game's bosses in quick succession, because of the almost immortal feeling it evokes. I believe that this mechanic and others like it were the precursor and inspiration for the boss rush modes that are so commonplace today. And while Capcom's Mega Man may not have been the first to use such design, I believe the argument could be made that few have done it quite as eloquently. Every last detail of the Mega Man experience has been meticulously tailored to foster the feeling of empowerment and growth. It is truly a piece of work to be revered among its kind, and it will stand as a beacon of hope shining light into the dust caked up by today's so-called console wars, which is ridiculous and counterproductive at its core. The achievement of this game is one that will not succumb to the eroding effects of time, and will forever be a reminder to the future generations that games have the potential to be great, and have the potential to make players better for playing them. I think it's about time I stepped off my little soapbox, sorry for subjecting you to my monologue, and if you're still with me, thank you for tolerating it. We've long since crossed the halfway point for this video, and before it ends I want to point out something about the last two Maverick encounters. Both Launch Octopus and Flame Mammoth have secondary weaknesses in common, which is novel at best and potentially harmful at worst. If you use the boomerang cutter enough times against either enemy, it will eventually sever appendages like the tentacles or trunks. In the case of Flame Mammoth, such a convention is barely even worth mentioning, as it seems to only prevent him from spewing oil slicks that were never really more than an afterthought to me anyway. However, I do have mixed feelings about its use against Launch Octopus. Without his tentacles, Launch Octopus is incapable of firing charged torpedoes and creating cyclones. Although this sounds like a good thing at face value, what it does is force him to unleash an unending maelstrom of regular torpedoes that can become troublesome to avoid. I don't believe that in 20 years I have ever managed to defeat this boss without taking damage. As I hope you can see, it also seems to complicate trying to attack Launch Octopus with his actual weakness, which is the Rolling Shield. Furthermore, producing this video has taught me that Launch Octopus performs a life-draining move that, to this day, I didn't even know existed. If you're caught in the Cyclone, Launch Octopus will cling to X's head and slowly drain away his energy and begin to regenerate. Anyway, now that we're through with the rematches, only one final mechanoloid stands between us and Sigma. This thing, known as D-Rex, is my second favorite battle in the game next to one that's yet to come. The battle grows faster and more intense as D-Rex takes more damage. I have a lot of fun navigating between its moving parts as it flies across the room. Its weakness, as I've read, is the boomerang cutter, 
but if you've reached any degree of mastery with X's high agility, such an advantage is hardly necessary. So, with this fun battle out of our way, but one more stage remains to be completed. I hope you'll join me next time as I challenge the almighty Sigma in one of the greatest and most difficult boss battles in gaming history. And as always, thanks for watching.